Hallelujah. Welcome again to this um, channel this afternoon. See, there is something I would just want to say briefly before you, you watch the movie. And um, I'm sorry, we, 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 like, you, you people don't subscribe to this channel. We discover that we have quite a lot of views on this channel, but less subscribers. You just watch those subscribers and we have begged, we have done all we could do. See, we are at your mercy. No matter how tongue speaking and, and spiritual we are, God will not come down to subscribe to us. You are the one that can do it. It's in your hand. You are, it is in your power to do. You can, God will not come down to do it. It's in your hand. It's in your power to do. And it doesn't cost. Just, just subscribe to the channel. We are at your mercy. God's work is at your mercy. This channel is at your mercy. Please, will you help us subscribe? Let us hear this word. We are begging humbly. It's like... No, I'm not crying. I'm like, I'm not crying. Like, I said I will not shed a single tear upon the sister. So, I won't shed a single tear upon the subscription button. I won't shed a single tear. But please, just... Bro, Femi, bro, John, Fajus Baba, is, is he crying? No, but it's like, please, just go subscribe. Please, subscribe. Please, press the button. I have subscribed. 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 I am subscribing now. Oh, wow. good. Thank you very much. Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. I should subscribe. You have subscribed to victory testimony in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Enjoy your viewing. appendix for a while and was supposed to be operated on it last week but I don't know how God did it it was a miracle appendix gone pains gone without surgery hallelujah I am sending this message on behalf of my husband and I I have a 10 year old daughter she is very artistic and prophetic all of a sudden an enemy struck she started behaving insane she will scream and throw things and sometimes break things. We did not know the source of the problem. Though I had some issues with some of my domestic staffs in the past, and my father is a kingmaker. On Thursday night, I had a dream. Someone was instructing me to go to Fejo's Baba channel and watch last movie. Wow. I started a journey of worship with my husband. My daughter is well now. She hugged me this morning. She is no more insane. She is no more. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please help me share this testimony. The gold on your altar rose for us. Praise God. This is beyond movie. I will wait upon God till the end, no matter what I am passing through. Fejos Baba, you have won my soul for Christ. Praise God. I have come back to give my testimony. I killed into the prayers at the end of this movie for my upcoming exam that I have done repeatedly with no pass. This time I exceeded the required score. Thank you so much, sir. May God continue to bless and keep you in good health and prosperity in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I watched this movie on the same day it was released. I took note of the four secrets. I myself, I am an afflicted Christian. Five days later, I walk in the morning hours of the morning. 
and I started weeping to the point of getting angry at God because I felt so tired of certain prolonged situations. As I was weeping in pain, I suddenly heard or remember the part in the movie where you said, if we fail in the days of adversity, then our strength is small. Go back to God and fix your gaze on Him, for in Him there is strength. I found strength and I felt better. God bless the day I found this movie channel. I love and appreciate this thing with my whole heart. I am from the Caribbean. Your work has imparted me here. Though we are far apart physically, thank you. Hallelujah. Wow. This can only be Jesus. Praise God. Well, many more testimonies are still coming. And please, do not forget to share your testimony to the email you're seeing right now on your screen. Do not forget to partake in the prophetic declaration at the end of the movie. Thank you very much. Williams. Thank you. Thank you for those powerful four keys that you used in mentoring a generation to survive in the University of Tears. You don't need to thank me. I got everything from the proper society. The great altar where mysteries are unveiled. But they were not for free. You paid the sacrifices to get those treasures in dark places. But, Williams, the syllabus is not yet complete. And that's why I've come again. Because some people still have question boxes. People who engaged the four keys. But then, things are still not easy, nothing changed. Yes, and that is why I have come. Some people in the University of Sears looking up to God are just wasting their time. Instead, they should look up to themselves. Look up to themselves? How? There are many people currently in the University of Tears, the School of Mara, who are not there by God's ordination. Williams, come, let's go. This is another revelation. Hmm. Indeed, we see in part. I thank God for this revelation. Um, there is that another message from the realm of the spirit. Different courses. Hmm. Different departments. Different schools. Some expelled, some on probation, some suspended because of this mystery called the University Backgate, which is as a result of the prayer from the eleventh power. When affliction lingers, can we pray in the spirit? As we enter this revelation, Jesus keep us shattered. Keep us shattered. In my God, do shatter. In my God, do shatter. Shatter, bakuda, mana shatter. In my God, do shatter. The vessels of men be open, not able satan alabashata. E fata, e fata, e fata. That the vessels of men be open, that their eyes be open, Nakida Basata Dabash. That men will see, that men will see, that men will see another revelation of you, Lord, Nabasata. That the ears shall be open, that the mind shall be open, Nakida Basata, Nedibun and Alabasha. That the mind of men is open to receive the word of truth. That power, the power shall emit, Lord, the power shall 
meat from this movie now. Nabida bula da bashata dini munakana. That men will see your outstretched harm. That they shall see your promise again. That they shall see you again. That men will see you from the beginning to the end. You are not just the Alpha and the Omega, but at the same time, you are the beginning, you are the ending too. That throughout this prophetic moment, let the prophets speak that they that my day they about shut out about that the climatic environment and atmosphere of your people obeys you, Lord. Until men shall see and are committed to hear what you have to say. That men are doing everything in obedience to the Christ. That men shall see that the eyes of men are open, that the men shall hear la bruda da bashata. La nida na la bushata na bala. It was never tears of joy, but sadness. I am 49, without a suitor. Everybody says, God will do it. Be patient. He has not forgotten. Yes, we are set to do it. <laughs> How are you? I said, everything. Make sure you be a good boy in school. Mm -hmm. When your mates slap your face, don't slap your own back. Mm -hmm. It's not the children of God. When you start to preach, you report to the uh, teacher. Mm -hmm. Be a Jesus boy. Okay. And don't trouble your mommy. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, before you come back, I'll get a pack of uh, groceries yeah, and biscuits yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. I hope you have a lot in your bag to take to school too. God bless you. My G. Take care, okay? God bless you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right, dear. All right. Thank um, you. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank so see you too. Yes. Even these hours to Uncle Williams and I alone. Don't worry, everything will be fine in no time. In what my transfer is done, we'll be back to this area mm. and everything will be fine. Um, take care of my husband for me. Mm? I bet you I will try, but okay. you have to take your food. All right. Yes, we're we'll running. Yes. Goodbye. Yeah, take bye. Care, Bye. <laughs> they have to be empty again. <laughs> this way. Last 
birthday, during my last birthday, you told me and prophesied that before this year's birthday, I would have been married. <laughs> yes, I did. And I meant every bit of what I said. Sister Naomi, just believe in God. God is on the throne. Just have faith in God. I had faith. I sowed seed. I sat faithfully. Then look up to God. And Today is my birthday, sir. I am 49. No one yet. Time is fast when you're expecting a miracle. God is on the truth. Doing what? I will soon be 50. Menopause is knocking. Then your miracle is knocking. The God ordained man is coming. The ordained man has been said to be coming since I clocked 30. You know what? I'll just get married to anybody, whether responsible or not, than to resolve in being a single mother. <laughs> Don't you mind going to see Brother Williams? Although he's no longer coming to our church, well, he can be of help. What does he want to tell me than to preach just like every other person? No, Brother Williams don't preach. He's not a normal minister. He has this uh, utterance that search deep into the intent of men. He's a well flowing like a living woman. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Praying and sweating profusely. Have you eaten? Food? Ah, no, ma'am. This is my third day of fasting and praying. For what exactly? Ah! Against lack and poverty, ma'am. <laughs> I need God to bless me with money. My family are depending on me. There are bills to pay. A lot of things to do with money. In fact, I am hungry. I need money. Hmm. If you could work for me, then I'll carry you along. Give me your number. Yes. Oh, thank you. I'll call you. Ah, brother! Money! Get back! Hey, call party! Give me money! I want money! Ragaga! I'll come back with ya! Hey, Coco! Leah! Uncle Williams, there's something about this Christian race that looks strange. Mm -hmm. What is that? Um, if we choose to obey and align to God's commandments, God is still God. And if we decide not to obey or align to His will, God is still God. And men will be the loser. Of course. Yeah, in, in other words, it means that um, whether you, you know, serve God or not, it doesn't change who God is. It rather determines your your life in eternity, determines your life here on earth and how successful you are going to be. Are you respecting anyone? No, no one check. I'm coming. I believe you to be Bro Williams. Good morning. Yeah, I am, but I don't think I've seen this face before. You should have. Look at me well. My situation has changed my face, but then you should be able to know me. Um, uh, Uncle Williams, it looks like she's one of the job numbers. Yeah, um, 
you know, since she stepped in, I'm trying to check the face if I can. You must be Sister Naomi. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Because the Lord had dealt bitterly with me. I am 49. He has never given me a man. He has afflicted me. He has brought misfortune upon me. Just take a look at me. Uh, okay, take, take, take your seat, ma'am. I'm not ready to sit. I'm here because the pastor said you are not a preacher and you have new and special words for me about my life from the Lord. Even in that regard, please, you still have to sit. No, Brother Williams. I am 49. I don't have a husband, not even a broken relationship. By the way, I'm so conversant with words like, it is well, God will do it. God has not forgotten you. So, if you have new utterance, speak. I, I can understand your pain. I can understand what you go through, okay? But um, you see, when God comes late, it is to give you the latest. I don't want the latest. I want anything. I am 49. I have waited enough. All the same. Sit down. I am not sitting down. Then the utterance I have for you is that your ways are ruined due to your raging anger against the Lord according to Proverbs 19 verse 3. And that this your current anger at the Lord has introduced the cause. Take it easy on me, sir. Even John the Baptist who followed the Lord, who was a follower of Christ, found himself in the prison and he was so angry that he lost his life in the end. It is futility to be angry against the Lord because God did not promise you a husband for serving him. What do I do, sir? Then you go back to your house, find a very good corner of your room, kneel down and ask God for forgiveness. Praise him for his faithfulness in your life because you are not in the mortuary. After doing all that? Then you come back and like a spiritual archaeologist, you find out what is wrong with your life because not all afflictions are from God. Some are from the university banquet resulting from prayers of the 11th hour, which has allowed these afflictions to be there. Sir? Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I'll see you again. Mm -hmm. Uncle Williams, is that not to wash? It's not. It is intentional. Because that woman will not listen to the word in a very soft way. You see, there are times you speak the truth without fear because if you do not, if you continue to pamper some people, it will bring a result of, of bread and butter Christians. God is not a transactional God that you serve because he, he, he must make you happy or because he must do something for you. Oh, is, is God or not man? Period. Is I am that I am. Please subscribe. just show love at all. He just threw those words at me. I I can understand your pain. I can understand what you go through. Okay? But um, you see, when God comes late, it is to give you the latest. I don't want the latest. I want anything. I am 49. I have waited enough. Okay, all the same. Sit down, man. I am not sitting down. I actually caused it. I never want to listen to him at all. But immediately he spoke those words. My heart sh shattered. My foolishness ended. Then the utterance I have for you is that your ways are ruined due to your raging anger against the Lord according to Proverbs 19 verse 3. And that is your current anger at the Lord has introduced the cause. Take it easy on me, sir. Even John the Baptist, who followed the Lord, who was a follower of Christ, found himself in the prison and he was so angry that he lost his life in the end. It is futility 
to be angry against the law because God did not promise you an husband for serving it. It was then I knew I was in for it. He spoke about the university bag gate, the pressure of the eleventh hour. It seems he has some utterances. I need to speak with him. Oh, I prophesy that my food shall come. I refuse to be hungry. A generation shall feed me. I declare food and money from east, south, and west. Kapata, elu kapata, sunololo, peko, eko, 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 food, money, food, money, food, money, paketo, elu, shikaba, epoka, muga, pa. Let's go and get food for me. Kapato si kapakota. So that's my predicament, sir. I have prayed. I have fasted. I have hoped. I have done everything I can do this year, sir. And that was why I got angry yesterday. But I'm fine now. Sincerely speaking, I, I understand how you feel. I understand how a woman at 49 will feel without any suitor. I understand how someone can feel when he has done everything right to do without any results. Thanks for your understanding, sir. What a great shame it will be celebrating my 50th birthday without a husband when my mates are already looking for admission for their children. Mm. My sister, God is good. God is God of the eleventh hour. God is God of the four days leads. God is God of the quarter to shave. When Lazarus, his very good friend, was sick, and it was the time for him to be healed, they went to Jesus Christ, and then he could not see them. But you see, Lazarus died. That is the worst happened. His friend died. And yet, they went to him. He still could not show up. All he told them was that the sickness would not lead to death. But, but Jesus said it won't lead to death. But he later died. That's because death here is not death in the realm of the spirits. Mm. There are differences in communications. And that is why a carnal man cannot do it. So when he said he will not die, and Lazarus eventually died in John 11, you know, he told his disciples that he's asleep and that he wants to go and wake him up. Hmm. So, death in the physical means sleeping in the spiritual? Mm. Yeah. Oh, you are getting it. Man, let's go deeper in Exusia, the revelation of God's word. When Jesus said uh, he was asleep, According to John, I think verse 12, yeah, verse 12, he said he's asleep mm -hmm. and that he wants to go and wake him up. Mm -hmm. Speaking from his own realm, you see, the disciples said, oh, if he's asleep, then Jesus don't need to go and check him, he will be fine. Somebody who is sleeping will definitely wake up after some time. So, and in verse 12, Jesus told his disciples that he's sleeping. So the disciples said, ah, Jesus, if he's sleeping, then <laughs> you don't need to go there. Mm. He will wake up. It was then Jesus was sensitive that he was communicating to his disciples from his own realm. Then immediately in verse 14, he said, ah, <laughs> okay, now I get it. Actually, Lazarus is dead. He quickly changed realm. He changed language to the disciples and said, mm, now I'm back home. Lazarus is actually dead. Hmm. Jesus. There is something about you that I, I can't explain. It looks like I'm eating. My potters are off name. So Jesus went there and Martha ran to him. Mary was still mourning. Hmm. Martha ran to him and said, Jesus, if you had been here very early, you wouldn't have died. You would have lived. And Jesus said, he's still going to live. 
speaking from his own realm, he said mm. he's going to leave. And Martha said, yes, I know. I know he's going to leave. Because definitely anyone who died in Christ will always live again. Mm. And, God, and Jesus said, mm -mm. Um, um, he, he was so conscious of his own realm. He was like, mm -mm. it's not about my realm now. He's going to physically live even right here and now. Ah, my hope in Jesus come alive. My faith in Jesus come alive. I have lost hope. I know you can still do it in the late days. And Jesus prayed and told them that if they believe, they would see the glory of God. And Jesus declared, said, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came back alive. Mm. So a situation that was hopeless came back alive. An hopeless situation that was buried came back alive. Mm. You see that? You see, glory is the graduating phase in the University of Tears. When you engage in the University of Tears, the graduating phase is the glory. You see, no faithless Christian will see the glory of God. They will only die and choke themselves up in the affliction. And that's why faith is very important as you pass through the University of Tears. Mm. Lord, forgive me. Increase my faith. Even when all hope is lost. Increase my faith. Even when it looks like I'm overdue. The doctor said your wound is dead. No, it is sleeping. He said your business is dead and it will not come alive again. No, it is sleeping. Mm. They said your ministry is dead. They said nothing good can come out of your ministry. No, it is sleeping. In fact, they said your life is dead and there is nothing your life can bring forth again. I tell you, it is sleeping. Mm. You see, God will eventually come. Only that he will not come at the time of the situation when he will not get glory. But at that time, at the threshold, when we get glory for himself, that is when he will come. He said he will not marry because you are late. No, he will marry. Mm. He will come. He will always come. Thank you, sir. I've really learned a lot from today's discussion. Language is not the same. Time is not the same. In both realms, operation differs. Operation really differs. Both, both realms, you see, the time here and there are different. The operations here and there are different. Even the languages are different. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. glad you took all that into the discussion of this morning. You see, also, I want to advise you also to stop using the eyes and lens of this realm to view the other realm. If you do so, your lens and high will go blur. And once your lens and high go blur, that it's going to be confusion. You are mm. confused because you are using your eyes and lens to view the realm. You mm. can't understand what is there. Leave the realm to that realm. Stay in your realm and be faithful to God in your realm. And you see people come true for you. Wow. Thank you, sir. You talked about the university back gate. <laughs> End of class. For today's lecture. See when we come back, yeah, we will deal with the university baggage in the next uh, lecture we're going to have. So it's better we take it bit by bit. When all your hope is gone and there's nowhere to turn, you're gonna be alright, right, right. No darkness or runs your way every day you're gonna be alright right, right. when all your friends are gone and there's nowhere to turn it's never too late for Jesus though darkness around your way every day it's never too late for Jesus come and Never too late is there when you call. Never too late, he will break every wall. Never too late when you call on Jesus. Never too late for him. He will be your light in your darkest night. It's never too late. Oh, Never too late for Jesus. 
Hello. Hello, bro. Hello, good evening, ma. I am the woman that collected your number at the church recently where you were praying. Oh, okay, ma. Yes, I remember. Do you know bro Williams? Bro Williams? I mean, actually, I'm not a member of that church. I only came there to pray. So I don't really know anybody in that church. Oh, really? I'll send my house address to you so we can discuss. Okay, okay, ma. Ah, I can't wait. But I will still wait to receive the address to your house. Okay, thank you. Elijah, you are taking groceries. <laughs> Gr groceries, that's what you guys call it. Oh. Ah, groceries. <laughs> How are you? Hope lecture was not stressful. How was lecture today? Wow, if this was not stressful, we thank God. Um, Auntie Esther called. She said she called your line, but you were not picking. I was actually with the woman that came yesterday. So I was busy with her then. So, but then when I finished, I saw I missed calls and I returned the call. Uncle, and am I not beginning to miss out on this university back door now? We've not even dealt with it at all. Okay. Yeah, we just uh, started some introductory aspect of it, you know, just taught us some, introduced that to, you know, few things about it. We've not even entered into the university bank it uh, stuff. That's good. So, what about bro Godwin's number? He's doing good. He's doing great. He sent his greetings. In fact, he has no other sermon than those four kids to give him. He preached it every year. <laughs> The truth is, doesn't he know about those kids before? I think he should. He knows them. He understands them by letter. Mm. Yeah. But now, just like Daniel, you understand by the books. Yeah. So it's not becoming a revelation or something that is good to teach. So he teach it, you know, to people. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think that is it. Yeah. I believe you should see this man. Sincerely, that is the only help I can give you for now. But if you're a rich man, will you give me money? You see, that was why I collected your number, Daddy. The way I saw you pray fervently because of money, I knew something was not right about your prayer. But it's best you see the man. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Ma. But Ma, can I at least get food, you know, you know to just get that strength and kind of... I was about saying that, don't worry, I'll get you some money, and I will give you the man's address. When you get to his place, just say you are from Sister Naomi. So let me just get you the money. And the Don't worry, I got you covered. Excuse me. Yeah. I think I made this face before. Is there any problem? Uh, actually, sister, Naomi gave me your address to come see you, sir. Oh, oh, oh okay. Take your seat, sir. If Jesus could come for his friend, if Jesus could come for his friend who was dead and was able for this late, my case is not hopeless. My case is not hopeless. My case is not hopeless. He will come for me and will roll this stone of delay away. In the name of Jesus, he will roll it away. In the name of Jesus, I am alive. I am alive. My Jesus will come. My Jesus will come. He will come for me. In the name of Jesus, this stone will be rolled away. It will be rolled away. This stone of the will be rolled away. In the name of Jesus. So you have been praying for money all along? <laughs> Sir, 
I need God to bless me with money. Okay. Ah, my families are depending on me. In fact, I didn't go to school. And you need a cancer clinic. You need a mind renewal operation. It's a waste of time to be praying for money because money was never lost. Ah, money was never lost. And where is the money? I need it. <laughs> you can use money, sir. Each time money comes to you, money has always been coming to you. But each time it comes, it returns. Ah! Sir, I knew it. Kapakatosia! God of Elijah, we had that. I knew it, my village people. Ah! They are the ones sending money away from you. And God will fire them. I do. I knew it. Nobody can send money away from you, my brother. Money keeps looking for man every time. It keeps looking for you, but not this version of you. Money was never designed to be a problem. You see, there are only two ways with which money comes to the hand of men. Only, look, ask for anybody anywhere who lives. There are only two ways money can come to your hand. It is number one, true value and productivity. And number two, true favor. That is, people bless you. Value and productivity is that problem you solve or the service you offer. Why favor is that people bless you or just give to you? Mm. Exactly. And you see what? You can pray for favor and yet frustrate it. And when money is given to you through favor, mm, it is not designed for, for you to eat it entirely. Favor to move money must not be eating or, you know, taking, using for anything entirely. There are two dimensions at which you engage and use any money that comes through favor. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, there's a dimension of favor that is for bread and another dimension that is for seed. In that when men bless you and say, take this money, the money is not for you to just eat your time. The percentage of the money is for bread, that is to satisfy your daily need, your survival. Another dimension is for seed. And when I mean seed, I do not mean that the other dimension is just to sow seed and you do this. No. It means that that dimension is expected for you to sow it into your value, to sow it into your productivity, to sow it into your work, to sow it into savings, to sow it into investment. Because money only grows in the hand of a multiplier. Ah, this is deep. Hey, but what about paying of tithes? Paying of tithes does not give you money. Yeah, I think you are shocked. God does not promise you money by paying tithes. If you look at Malachi, where everybody always wants to engage, the promise of paying tithes is open heaven. You see, when you give your tithe, you say the windows of heaven are going to be open, and God will pour you out blessing. This is money. Anytime heaven's open, this is money that drops, is rain that drops. So when you pay tithes consistently, the promise is that your heaven should be open, and what comes out of open heaven is rain of blessing. Blessing, money, but I didn't know the same. I know. Oh. Blessing is not money. Blessing is just a capital that now draws that paper dimension of money. Blessing is ideas. Blessing is creativity. Blessing is hard work. Blessing is talent. Blessing is skill. Blessing is good health. Blessing is favor. So all those things, ideas, creativity, all those things are the blessings God gives to you by paying tight. Now the work of those blessings is now the one that is going to now bring in the money. The ideas you get from paying tight, when you use the idea consistently and competently, the man brings money to your pocket. When you use your wisdom, which you got from paying tight, then men look at the wisdom and like the queen of Sheba, they bring gold to your palace. When you use your blessings well, that comes in terms of your good health, you are not sick, you are favored. All those things that the world are not bring money. So the paper dimension of money come through blessing and blessing come through paying tight. And you can only pay tight when your heavens are open, the blessing comes and the blessing draws the money. So payment of tight does not bring you paper money. There's a transaction that goes in the process according to the spiritual protocol. Thank you, Uncle Williams. It means you have to be valuable and productive in whatever you do in order to get money. And in other words, get something doing, be a problem solver to get money. And if God blesses you with favor, you have to invest the money into productivity. That's how it works. That's how to get rich. 
You can stay in church praying and fasting, hugging the bowl, atata, itata, itata, while you meet in the marketplace, you know, working with your ideas, working with your creativity, and expect God to bless you. It doesn't work that way. Oh. Indeed, God has been blessing me through tides, sir. Oh. In fact, in numerous ways. Mm -hmm. But I thought the money will keep coming, you know, coming without doing anything. <laughs> you see, God loves you so much, my brother. And that's why he has closed the windows of heaven so that you can be responsible. So no matter what, get something doing. And then you now pray to God to bless the works of your hand. That's how to get rich. <sighs> Thank you very much, sir. In fact, I have been oriented. I have received a paradigm shift. Thank you very much, sir. So now, I want to bless you now. So that when I now bless you, which comes to favor, I believe you now know what to do well. Good evening. For me, or is that evil? Oh my God! God, you finally did it! Money! Ah! Thank you, sir. God will bless you and your. No, no. Everything will God will bless you, sir. Ah! Money! Now that money came through for you, you have to know the dimension of it, which is for seed, and the one which is for bread. I think we youth need to know this. This is so powerful because this will stop the youth from getting frustrated because they think Titan is not biblical because they did not see the paper money. Titan is biblical. Sowing of seed with understanding is biblical. Those who engage in it can testify that it is a very good spiritual pathway to wealth and abundance. As I've given you money now, I expect to be blessed of God. Because the Bible says that blessed is he who gives to the poor. That same person who lends to the poor, who gives to the poor, the Bible says he has given to the Lord and God will repay. So the Bible cannot lie. It's everywhere around saying that giving people money or sowing of seed or helping people is, is, is a way of cheating. No. There are people with depraved and blocked understanding. They don't know anything. The Bible says that whosoever lendeth to the poor, the poor is somebody who does not have. The poor is not just a street beggar. Whosoever lendeth to the poor, who giveth to the poor, who favoreth the poor, favors God. And God will repay. And you can see that in the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 17. Thank you very much, sir. This is nothing but a Bible study. Kingdom financial course. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. When affliction lingers, when affliction remains, not everyone's affliction is the affliction of the righteous. Some affliction in people's lives today is because of continuous and flagrant disobedience, because of sin, some for corrections. Because in this university, if you jump any level, Life will bring you back to repeat it. So we have something that we can call the affliction of the unrighteous? Yes, that's the back gate. And that's Naomi's case. The back gate. So no matter how long she looks up to God, nothing can happen. Good morning, sir. Hello. You have come to hear the next lecture. Yes, sir. Why affliction lingers? 
I've spoken about the four keys to survive in affliction. And I also, you know, spoke about the fact that there are some times that God permits affliction for his glory to be seen. But then one must have faith. Yes, sir. The university back the way affliction lingers is what you promised to discuss today. See, affliction has lingered in the life of many and may never leave. You know why? Because many Christians have decided to go through the university back gates. This university back gates, you know, signifies a quick route to run out of the waiting room, to run out of the University of Kings, to run out of the affliction period so that they can quickly encounter the glory that is to come. And these are people who didn't pass the test of patience, long suffering, and perseverance. Mm. So, you know, with much prayer that comes from the eleventh hour, different opinions begin to fly around their table from the enemies of the university system. These are people who cannot wait, who cannot endure, who are not patient, who has you know gone through the bad gate and do not have interest in waiting. They begin to now bring different opinions and suggestions that fly around the table of this African Christian. Mm -hmm. So these Christians, you know, they go through the bad gates, they go to these people, use their opinion, and then they get solution. Do they really get solution to all this crisis? <laughs> well, the devil has a gift, and God has a gift too. Both can perform miracles. But some can fasten the miracle and bring men into their doom. So indeed, they do get the miracles. They get their solutions and bring it. They bring their testimonies into the university system to testify to the glory of God. The glory that God does not own, they bring it and want to force it of God in the university. And this also is done to confuse people who are patiently waiting on God so that they can seek their own counsel and also go through that same route. And some will not get any solution at all. So after much trial, they now come back to the university system, you know, in regret and in humility to stay with God again. But the truth is that they have to repeat the class that they have missed. So the course of patience that they left and run to get solution. When they didn't get the solution after many years, they come back to the university and they have to repeat that course. Because the truth is you cannot fasten patience. You cannot rush process. No matter how you decide to rush a season, you can't rush it because a woman must go through nine months for delivery. No supernatural can rush that process of time. In fact, any woman who delivers in three months is seen to be demonic. So patience is a school you must pass and you must excel in. You can't rush it. Ha! Ah, university back gates. It's much pressure that takes a lot of people there, especially at the 11th hour. I just, I just think it's better to wait but on God instead of cutting through corners. If you go through shortcuts, your life will definitely be cut short. The shortcut glory means cost glory short. That's the So they said your business was not going nowhere. And then you decided to go to the university baggage. And when you go there, they give you an option. They say you should sprinkle salt, egg, and water around the business. And then you went to sprinkle it around the business. And indeed, customers begin to come. They begin to patronize your business. Contract begin to come because the devil can also perform miracle, but you don't know that a day of reckoning will come. Any time you jump an embarrassment to attain and touch the glory, the devil will ask for the bait. It is a law. You don't touch glory if you don't pass through the school of embarrassment. It's embarrassment that precedes the glory. Even Jesus Christ, before he became the man of all nations, before he stood on that cross, he was embarrassed on the way before we saw him in glory. And so therefore, any Christians who decide to fasten the University of Jesus experience by going to the back gate to embrace all the fraternize and the you know, courses that Babylon offer, they will get the glory, yes. But that embarrassment is coming back. The devil will ask for the bait. You said you have been waiting for God for the fruit of the womb for years. But because you could not wait, you went to the university back gate 
and they give you hair and palm oil to drink. And beautifully, in nine more time, you got your baby. Don't worry. The baby that will claim your life has just arrived. Mm. They said your husband only do the way he like anyhow. He goes out, he's not only staying at home, you're always in, you know, you're always in shambles. Mm. And you as a wife, you have prayed and prayed and prayed, and you saw no change. And the next thing you did was to go to the back gate, and then they gave you what to use. You put it in your husband's phone, your husband ate it, and he was very humble. Anywhere you tell him to go, he goes. When you tell him sit down, he sit down, don't worry, the beat is coming. Because in your family, there are battles here and there, mm. and they are killing people everywhere. You went to the back Gate. And they told you that the solution to your problem is to swallow a life blade. Mm -hmm. Now, when you swallow the life blade, no matter what they told you, nothing will happen to you. Mm -hmm. You swallow the blade. Yet, they are pursuing you, they are running after you in the dream. Don't worry, the rebate is coming. When you see affliction like an archaeologist, you find out if this affliction from God, if it's from God, find the rest and wait. But if it's from the devil, it's from the bad gate, then there are things that you must engage because life will pester you hard if you hold the glory without embarrassment. Anytime the children of God carry glory, mm -hmm. what they find out in the spiritual realm is to find out the embarrassment dimension mm -hmm. that bear the glory. If you didn't find it there, like an archaeologist, you will find out where you got the glory from. If it is first glory, first fame, first increase, life will pester you mm -hmm. and bring you back to the school year one when you start again mm -hmm. the University of Jesus. Jesus Christ, where are this coming from? From the portals of Zion. Just be patient to get the best from God. You must start to carry. We build until we become an affront. So when affliction lingers, my sister, we find out if it's from God. If it's from God, then find rest. The sickness of Lazarus was for the glory of God to be revealed. Mm. A man was born blind in the Bible. And the disciples asked Jesus Christ, who are this man offended that made him born blind? Mm. Jesus answered, very little offend, the boy didn't offend, mm. but that the glory of God should be seen. So, man, the affliction you are going through now is from God. You can find rest. But if it is from the devil, if it's as a result of the fact that you have visited the university back in, and you think you are waiting on God, you are joking, man. The solution is that you speak out. Let us know. Is there anything you have done? Is there anything during your waiting experience that has made you to visit the back gate so as to get the glory? You speak out. When you speak out, now we're not going to go back to God and beg God for forgiveness. Not to now bring the glory, but to beg Him so that we send you back to year one and you start your experience again. That's how it works. My Lord, I'm sorry. I have been to the university back gate out of pressure. Ah, help me, sir. Sister Naomi, what are you doing? See, you need to take these steps while you wait for God for a husband. Though. <laughs> See, there are some steps you must take and you must do it by yourself. I'm not ready to take any step outside of God. You see, I've been praying. I know he will answer me too. Hey, he's like... These are prophetic steps. I want to Oh, see, these are steps that you take that will make things that you want to come quickly. See, I know we are children of God, but this is not evil at all. You have to do these things yourself for them to work for you. Okay. What is it? Good question. Very good one. Hold on. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, this is a candle. And as you are looking at this, it is not an ordinary candle. Many prophets in the four corners of this world have prepared prayers over this candle you are looking at. Yes, some, some of them even use 41 days on the mountain just because of this powerful candle. And that makes it not ordinary. It is a spirit-filled candle. Now, this is how you are going to use it. You see this candle? Exactly 1 a.m. in the midnight. You are going to light it and form a circle while you sit and miss the circle and you carry your Bible with it. Yes. My Bible? Yes, your Bible. You see, I told you, it is not Antichrist. Ah. Oh. Hm. Then you begin to say, my destined husband, you hold your head. My destined husband, I call you forth. Wherever you are, begin to locate me. Oh, anywhere he is, he will run to you. 
You will say, begin to run to me wherever you see me, begin to locate me. Come forth. You will call him forth. Whatever he is, he will see you. This is what you are going to use. The solution to your problem. Please subscribe. My destined husband. He came to see me now. Receive illumination by these candles and find me now. Begin to find me now. Receive illumination by these candles and begin to look for me. Receive illumination by these candles and find me now. And find me now. I call you forth. I call you forth. I call you forth. Begin to see me now from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. Begin to find me now. Begin to find me now. My destiny husband. Begin to find me now. Receive illumination by these candles. Receive illumination by these candles. And begin to see me. And begin to see me. And begin to see me. Come now. Find me now. From the north. From the south. From the east. From the west. Begin to find me now. 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 My destiny husband. My destiny husband. Begin to find me now. Begin to find me now. Hmm. Babylon. You thought you prayed. Because the prayers is different. The prayers of those at the university bank gates are different from the prayers that are being organized and observed by sons in Zion. You have successfully prayed and summoned men from the underworld to marry you. Then do you expect to get a man? Ah, I'm in serious trouble. Ever since I did that nine years ago when I clocked 40, there was no change except that I saw myself getting married in the dream. So I felt a miracle was coming. Many people are going through affliction today, thinking that they are waiting on God and they are waiting on their testimonies, not knowing that their vice chancellor has changed. They have left the affliction room to the university bad gates out of prayer. And not until this kind of revelation comes to them, and not until they come back from that bad gate and reconcile to God and decide to wait and trust in Him, the affliction will linger. And in the long run, the affliction will eventually kill them. Because God is faithful. Sir, what do I do? The portals are opening, but unfortunately we have limited time. So can you shout this loud and clear? You say, my father, my father. My father, my father. Any relationship I have gotten myself into. Any relationship I have gotten myself as into. As a result of compromise. As a result of compromise. I break that relationship now. I break that I relationship now. My father, my father, my father, any relationship at all that I've gotten myself into by fraternizing with the university baggage, I break it. that relationship right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I break myself, I break myself, I break myself, I break loose from every spiritual relationship that I've found myself, that I've put myself in. Break it in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, no, we pray. Amen. You're going to keep praying those prayers, and I will send you more prayer points. But you see what? You have to come back to God and recklessly abandon yourself in His presence. You may be 49, forget that one, forget that time. Because in the realm of the Spirit, the Spirit realm can see you as age 24. Mm -hmm. So you are the one seeing yourself as 49. So recklessly abandon yourself before God and you will see Him come true for you. Amen. Amen. Because they only do things in their own time. End of class. In other words, if the affliction is due to compromise, impatience, and sin, you have to come back to Jesus and wait on Him. Because after God, He's still God. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The path of sin too long I've trod, Lord, I'm coming home, coming home, coming home, never more to roam. Open wide thy arms of love, Lord, I'm coming home. I've wasted
wasted many precious years. Now I'm coming home. I now repent with bitter tears. Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home. Coming home. Never more to roam. Open wide thine arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. My soul is sick. My heart is sore. Now I'm coming home. My strength renew, my hope restore. Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home, coming home. Never more to roam. Open now thy arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. I disconnect myself from every form of spiritual relationship that I've found myself. I disconnect myself from every spiritual relationship that I've put myself, every form of effect that this thing has cost me, every effect of compromise. Standing on my way to my testimony, I invoke the blood of Jesus to erase them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I receive strength. I receive fresh strength. I am renewed. In the name of Jesus, I will wait upon the Lord. I receive fresh grace to wait upon the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I receive fresh strength. I receive fresh grace to wait upon the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I am saved. I am delivered. I am set free. In the name of Jesus. I am set free. I am disconnected. In the name of Jesus. I am free indeed. In the name of Jesus. I will wait upon the Lord. I receive that grace to wait upon the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hello, sir. Hello, Enoch. Where are you? Yeah, I am around that uh, filling station you told me. Yeah, but I can't, I, I can't locate your place. Oh, you are a bit closer. In fact, just drive straight, turn to your right, then you will see my store there. That, that's where my store is. Oh, oh, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Fine, sir. Fine, sir. Wow. Bro Williams, I'm seeing you myself. Wow, this, this, this is beautiful. Ah, Bro Williams, indeed you are God sent. Oh, sir, God sent you to me. Hey, sir, why well, I still believe prayer is important. Because if I did not go to that church that day and pray fervently, I won't see Sister Nam, Dana later connected with you, sir. <laughs> you see, one of the greatest miracles that can happen to any man is the renewal of mindset. Mm -hmm. Because it is impossible for any man or woman to go beyond his or mindset. Yes, sir. Oh, oh. Uncle William, thank you very much. Sam, call me. Oh, I need to do something. <laughs> Thank 
Really? Enoch, you got me a bottle of Coke. Wow. I'm happy. I'm happy. God bless you. Wow. Ah, ah. In fact, money has been coming small, small, sir. Because it was when I was praying, I saw the vision of this business. Sir, I'm coming, sir. <laughs> Can see. see what God has done. In this shop. See what God has done. All this money exactly, made in this shop. In this shop. See what I made today from this shop. God has been helping me. I can hit now. I cannot be fine. Wow, time. wow. We're going to keep your money. That's... Ah, over here. Thank you very sir. That vision you saw about this business is one of the blessings of paying your tithes, which has now brought you money. Many people, many people who are not faithful to tithe, they are cheating themselves because they will be doing a lot of things without divine revelation. You know, they will do a lot of things without divine revelation of what they're supposed to do. So they will just be trying and error, trying and error and everything. Indeed, you are God sent. Now, I do not pay my tithe with this entitlement or transactional mentality. I now pay my tithe to honor God, sir. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, it says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom, not just key. So prayer is not the only key. There are other keys. Diligence is a key. Hard work is a key. Consistency is a key. Wisdom is a key, and so on. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Sir, in fact, I cannot go to school now because I believe this business will grow more and more, sir, with prayer. Oh, I believe, sir. Of course, as long as you service it with diligence, consistency, prayer, and competence, it will go far. You see, anything that one does, you know, and one put consistency there, you put diligence, hard work, competence, and then you back it up with prayers, we always succeed. You see, I just came to just check on you and to see how how you are doing. Thank you very much. Sir, your kind is rare. Eh? In this cosmos, your kind is rare. Because I know, I just said this in Oh no, you can attend to your customer. Let me let me be green. I, I will check you back. Sir, oh, Thank I you. Just, ah, no, don't worry. Don't worry. No. Ah, no. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, he's not around, but he's very close. You can sit down with your seat. Let me get you water. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sister Naomi. Good morning, sir. How are you, ma? I'm fine, thank you. I hope you, you've sir. not waited for too long. In fact, I just came in. Wow, wow. And I just want to thank you, sir. Mm. My faith has been positioned in God. And I'm now happy to recklessly abandon myself on God to do whatever He chooses to do with me. Simple. While you busy yourself in His vineyard, serving Him and working for the cause of the kingdom. Even if you could come four days later, it means that there's no time too late for him to come. Mm. He will definitely come. Mm. Because Job in the Bible said, Though he slay me yet, I will trust him. Hmm. Thank you, sir. And thank you for Enoch. He told me everything. <laughs> in fact, I just came from his place. You know, I just... 
I want to encourage him and um, give him more courage while he waits on the Lord. Sister Naomi, I want you to believe something. I know how you can feel. I know how anybody can feel. But I tell you, there's one thing about God. He's not just the person that will go. He will always come. Mm. He will come. He will not just come at our own time. Mm. But one truth is this. He will come. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Mm. That's that enough. It's a disturbing statement. But let's look at the but B of that statement, mm. he said, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Mm. So no affliction will he live in your life without delivering you. He will come. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary one, that God will surely come. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. He will come and save you. Lift up your eyes to him. You will arise again. He will come and save you. Lift up your eyes to him. You will arise again. He will come and save you. Jesus will come. And just like we always do, it's time for the prophetic declaration. The prophetic declaration that was made at the end of the first part produced a lot of testimonies, countless testimonies. The testimony of by this time tomorrow. So I would like to pray for some of us who are into business that is staggering or in a ministry that needs men. I want to invoke a mystery called the Noah Ark Mystery. Noah stood at the door of the ark and began to see animals coming, male and female, into the ark. It is a grace that compelled those animals to come. That same grace can bring men to your ministry. That same grace can bring men to your business. And so I decree and I declare by the prophetic, as many as the vessels are open to receive now, I stretch forth my hand towards you that that grace shall rest upon your life now. It shall rest upon your ministry and your business in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And for those who have given their life to Christ due to the university baggage and are now making a decision to come back to God and wait and be patient with Him. I pray that the mercy of God shall locate you in the mighty name of Jesus. Permit me to declare again that by this time tomorrow, that thing you have been waiting for, that good news you have been waiting for, between now and the next 24 hours, come back with your testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Next Sunday, you'll be watching another part the University of Tears, part three. Don't miss out. Stay blessed. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The path of sin to long have trod. Lord, I'm coming home, coming home, coming home, never more to roam. Open wide thy arms of love, Lord, I'm coming home. I've wasted many precious years Now I'm coming home I now repent with bitter tears 
Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home, coming home. Never more to roam. Open wide thine arms of love. Lord, I'm coming home. My soul is sick, my heart is sore. Now I'm coming home. My strength renew, my hope restore. Lord, I'm coming home, coming home, coming home, never more to roam. Open now thy arms of love, Lord, I'm coming home.